Hello everyone, signing off for the season here at the Etihad, which by the way, the floodlights are on. Um, but it's always been a remarkable place to come and watch football. Uh, obviously apart from that scoreline, which is pretty, uh, pretty damning. Uh, still got the press stuff out up there. Uh, you can see Mr. Lee Croft is up there. Is he going to wave? There he is. That's Lee Croft doing from doing Radio Norfolk and Dave Freezer is here, roughly there, my finger. There you go. Uh, I'm not going to do the whole of this report here because I don't like doing them with masks because you can't hear me talking. But I am here. See, so here you go. Uh, but yeah, finished five nil. You should have seen from the score. Um, what more do you want from me? <laughs> Norwich have been outclassed. Of course they have. Man City finished second. Norwich finished with uh, one of what I, I don't know if it was the sixth, fifth. Worst Premier League campaign, sixth, I think. Um, I think they got the worst ever tally of goals scored away from home. I can't remember what it was, I'm guessing seven. Um, yeah, it's just wretched really, isn't it? They, for, for a team that won the championship to then be so far off it in the Premier League, I'm just simply hoping that Norwich are in that window on their own between the two divisions and then that's exactly what we'll see next year. But uh, we all know football doesn't quite work out like that. Uh, I'm going to try and collect some thoughts while I leave the ground. But uh, yeah, that was what it was. It was a pleasure to see David Silver's last game in, in English football. I mean, I'm assuming. I don't actually know where he's off to or if he's retiring. I don't know. But he's obviously been a, a Premier League legend, a Manchester City hero. It was lovely watching him try and score today <laughs> a lot. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne uh, is one of my favourite Premier League players for, for a number of years now. He's just so good to watch. And the two goals today, just superb. Uh, Raheem Sterling obviously tried his best to get up amongst the uh, the golden boot uh, uh, whatever so golden boot rankings um, and to push Jamie Vardy and uh, Edison came away with the most clean sheets this season uh, De Bruyne most assists or playmaker whatever they call it so yeah I'm going to move on have a think and come back to you in a bit but this is here inside oh it's really windy out of here I hadn't really realised that um so yeah, we're, we're, we're done, aren't we? Um, I, I, it's really hard to judge any of that because it's such um, such bizarre circumstances, but clearly <laughs> not ideal with Norwich's squad that Daniel Farker couldn't name a full complement of nine substitutes. And out of the eight he did name, two of them were goalkeepers. Um, it's awkward when every time in the last two to three years, Daniel Farker has been going on about how a no debut is a gift. <laughs> And uh, he brought on um, Jordan Thomas and Akim Fumewo for their debuts with about 10 seconds left <laughs> today. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, that's me being cynical. It's obviously nice that they got to, uh, got to come on and have a, have a little look at what it might be like on a, on a pitch in the Premier League for a few minutes against some exceptional talent, obviously. Um, VAR kind of scuppered Norwich. You know, it's, it's funny to think that in the Championship... Uh, if the linesman or assistant referee, lineswoman, doesn't flag and El Hernandez off, whether he is or not, doesn't matter because the, the decision's been made and the goal stands. And of course, that would have been that would have been the opening goal today. Timo Pukki being put through. You know, he was very straight on. He he should have taken the ball around to Edison. He won't come up against a goalkeeper like Edison in the in the Championship. I think. Uh, it's interesting, a piece I've written actually that, that will be going up tomorrow reviewing the season. Um, Timu Pukki has, has scored with his first shot on target in his last eight seasons, including uh, two of his uh, seasons at Norwich, of course. So you'd like to think that that's a run he can... Uh, may, maybe next season comes down, and how it goes for him at Norwich, comes down to how he takes his first shot on target. I don't know. It feels like we're into those margins, but we know Norwich have got to make a fast start. Timo Pukki scoring his first shot on target next season like he has done for the last eight uh, might be a good moment um, to continue that uh, run and keep hit the ground running um, Anel was very good today I have to say um, Timo needs a break I think we all need a bit of a break I don't even know what I've said in half of these videos recently so apologies if they've been a bit rambly um, there were some good performances there I don't really know and I, in truth I think if you spoke to a lot of people at Norwich City and the foot inside the club. I don't think they know who's going to still be here next season um, in terms of the ones we saw play today. Who, who is going to come in for these players? How much are they going to offer? How much is going to be uh, an amount that Norwich will accept? They'll obviously people have ideas in their minds, but without us getting to a point where we know what's happening, it's almost you know, impossible to really say at this point. We don't know. And 
I think Daniel probably, Daniel Farker feels the same as well. So there's so much to play out over what is a very short period of time. The new season we now know starts on September the 12th. We know that Bournemouth and Watford have been relegated alongside Norwich, which means Aston Villa stayed up. So fair play, um, fair play to Villa. I mean, the fact they went and won 5 1 at Carrow Road, um, you know, it's probably deserved to be a big enough gap to keep them up, even if. Even if what really kept them up was that goal <laughs> that should have counted um, for Sheffield United at Villa Park when all this got back underway. But there we go, it's another debate. Um, uh, and obviously nice to see some of the youngsters get, uh, get the, their, their moments. Um, we know there's going to be business that will get confirmed over the coming weeks. The transfer window is still open up until October, I think. I can't remember exactly when. So obviously that plays a part. Norwich you know, might, be, might be several weeks into the season and all of a sudden... Max Aaron and someone comes in for him you, you just don't know um, if he's still here by that point which he might not be um, I don't know if there's anything else to say I don't know if there's anything else really I want to pick up on the, on the pitch Todd did okay I thought while he was while he was out there uh, you know the way he moves over the ground is always it's always good to watch um, Jamal Lewis I, I, I feel like he's short of confidence at the moment but that's maybe the only real with the ball I think that's having an impact I thought defensively he was pretty good for the most part, um, and you know Ben Godfrey and and, and Christoph Zimmerman are probably the best centre back pairing. Although I don't know, Grant Handley looked good when he was back as well, didn't he? So uh, all on terms of a Norwich level, anyway. Um, and I think that's it. I can't believe the season is over, and yet I can't believe it's taken 352 days to get here. Given I, uh, it was almost a year year to the week that I was there. Uh, getting the supporters coaches to Liverpool on the opening night and sitting in with the away fans and it feels like such a world away it's just been a truly ridiculous season a truly wretched one in so many ways Norwich have fought so hard uh, to get back to playing uh, these teams you know as a club that has spent not you know the majority but certainly enough of its life to be back in the Premier League but then I don't know do you feel the same as me like you know, Norwich, Bournemouth and Watford, the three teams that went up in 2015, they're all coming back down. What, what is this whole stabilising in the Premier League thing? Because Sheffield United have had an amazing season. And you know what? When it kicks off, kicks off in September, the only thing going through their mind is, how the hell are we going to stay up again? That, that's just how it is. And maybe it's me getting older, but I just can't really get upset about relegation. Um... But I think that's probably because in the back of my mind, I'm really hoping that the foundations of the last three years mean that they start really well next season and they do really well in the championship. And I think I'll feel very differently if, you know, they're a whale flat because I think that would become a very difficult situation. Well, there we go. We're done. The 2019-20 season is over. Um, Thank you so much for watching these all throughout the season and engaging wherever you've watched them. Um, when we get into next season, which I will be covering for The Athletic, uh, following Norwich City throughout the Championship and, and beyond, um, I'll be doing these, of course, home and away. Uh, and if I can do any other videos, I will try and do those as well and, and do as much as I can on, on all sorts of shenanigans. But uh, uh, and, and feel free to leave any comments, questions and what have you that you would like to. Um, but this is me signing off from my video verdicts for the year. Thank you again so much. Uh, we'll be back to do it all again a bit more of the football for 2021, 2020, 2020, 2021 in the EFL Championship. So let's hope it goes as well as last time. Take care, all the best, keep safe. Maybe you'll be in grounds too when uh, I'm next at them as well. Right, I'm going, see you later.